Good morning. Welcome. All right, now quiet down. <laughs> now, welcome to worship this morning on this third Sunday of Advent. And as always, we want to welcome our people online who are worshiping with us this morning. It's wonderful to have you with us as well. We're excited to have you here this week for worship. And as we begin worship this morning, we begin as we always do, being prepared for worship by our staff pianist, Sonny. Now we'll have the lighting of the Advent candles by the Lindhorst family. When God's people were surrounded by hardship, suffering, and grief, Isaiah proclaimed, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance on our, uh, of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. We come today as people who are also surrounded by suffering and grief, and yet the Spirit hovers among us, tending and anointing, inspiring freedom where there is captivity, declaring blessing in places the world has cursed, and igniting fierce joy where mourning and heartache prevail. And let us respond together. We wait as people who experience hardship and pain, yet we are called to witness to the persistent joy that sustains our people as God's people. We light these candles as signs of our shocking hope, just peace, and fierce joy. May our lives shine with the fierce, tenacious joy of the light who lives in our hearts as we wait and work for the coming of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Let 
us stand together as we sing our first hymn this morning, O Little Town of Bethlehem, found on 230 in your hymnal. town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. Scenes of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls still receive him, still the dear Christ enters in. O holy child of Send to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us. seated. Do we have children that would join me up here for the children's moment? I've got uh, some little stickers to give you and I want to talk for a minute about our third city, uh, our destination city. Um, what's the first city that we came to? You can see it on the back of the wall there and the name is there. Jerusalem. Hi Daisy. And what's the second city? Last week we were talking about the place where Jesus lived, Nazareth. And so today we're talking about the place where Jesus was born. What's that city? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Do you notice anything different about the sanctuary? You girls were here last week. What's different about the sanctuary? The manger and the star. <laughs> the manger and the star, yes. We, uh, one of our craftsmen built that little manger for us and... Uh, one of our craftswomen put that star up there, and uh, we are ready to celebrate the birth. We're going to, for tithes and offerings today, um, you know we call this uh, March to the Manger. And so everybody will get to come up. The manger's over here, okay? Just, just so you see it there. And there's a little, when you get up close, you'll see the little manger that you can drop your tithes and offerings in uh, when we get to that point. But... Um, are you girls uh, excited for Christmas? Yes. yes. All right. It's going to be fun. Well, I have a sticker to give each of you if you would like to wear that. Um, I'm going to put one on myself today. Caroline, would you pass that to Daisy, please? Thank you. Thank you. And then, I don't know, I've got a roll of 100. Do you think, uh, do you think we have enough to share? I bet we do. I bet we do. Uh, would you girls want to help me pass some out? 
if I give you a long string of them, um, all you do, just kind of break them. You know, they'll tear real easily, and you can just pass one to people. Would you mind helping me? Oh, good. This will be fun. <laughs> this will be great fun. Here, I'll give you a roll. Just go uh, offer a sticker to people. You don't have to stick them. Just, just kind of hand them the... Hand them the sticker. There we go. Hand them the sticker. So they'll, they'll just tear in half real quick, or you can, like, offer it to them, whatever you want to do. Like, see, they'll just tear real easily like that. All right. Thanks, Daisy. Appreciate your help. All right, go sticker people. Nice. This will just take us a moment. I think we've got plenty of time. I'll start in the back. All right. We've got plenty of time. Ball game or something, and they're selling 50-50 tickets. I, I don't know. I just <laughs> oh, man. That's, that's terrible. <laughs> Couple for you guys. They're hard to find. If I can get this piece of tape. Hey, check booth. Mute my microphone, please. Thank you. Now I can whisper to people and it's not. You need one. Jim needs one right here. Howard needs one. Hey, Daisy, right up here. He's funny. Thank you, Caroline. All right, we've stickered everybody. If you have any left, take them home, sticker somebody else, sticker the dog, whatever. <laughs> it's all good. Um, thank you for being here this morning. It is a joyful Sunday. We lit our pink candle, the joy candle. Um, and I really liked the liturgy that the Lindhorst led us in, in that it acknowledges that even in the midst of joy, sometimes things are very difficult. You know, We have things to be joyful about. We also have things that are weighing heavily on us, and, and life is just like that. Um, but we're reminded, especially during this season, that Jesus is with us, and he will make a way for us. Um, as we come to this time of prayer, just uh, share with Jesus. You can be honest with Jesus. Share with him what you're feeling. If it's a joyful day for you, that's wonderful. Say, thank you, Lord. If it's a difficult day for you, you can tell him that, and, and he will bless you. So just let's have a few moments of uh, prayer while Sonny, are you, all right, nicely stickered, the piano, thank you. And we'll uh, just give you a few moments, come before the Lord in prayer, and then I'll lead us in a group prayer. If you're worshiping with us, we're so glad, uh, online, we're so glad that you're here. Just bow your heads where you are and talk to the Lord a few moments. Tell him what you're dealing with this week. Tell him how you're feeling as we approach the Christmas holiday, if you have concerns, if you have health issues, if you have financial burdens, talk to Jesus about it. He will help.
We thank you for this time to worship together. We thank you that Jesus is with us. We do pray, Lord, for our world. There are so many problems. There is so much sin. Um, There's so much violence. Lord, we do pray for peace and joy and love. We pray for these things, Lord. We pray that hope can come again to hearts that have forgotten how to look forward to anything. Lord, we just pray that you will move in and through our world. Lord, move in and through us and help us to shine the light of your presence into the darkness of the world. We know that there is much for us to do. We know that our witness at times is not as bright as it should be. We do ask your forgiveness, Lord. But we we know that you love us. We know that you have plans for our world. We know that Jesus came to bring us salvation, to bring us life, abundance, and good here on earth and eternal in the heavens. And we celebrate all of that. Lord, in this time of worship, just touch each and every one of us. Touch us and help us to know that we are not alone. We ask your blessings and we ask you to hear us as we pray now the way Jesus taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So we come to our time of offering this morning, and we do have, um, we're going to collect the regular tithe, um, the regular offerings, and then we have envelopes for a special offering. This is called our March to the Manger offering, and half of what is collected in these envelopes will go to our Glen Ed Food Pantry. Um, they do wonderful ministry throughout the year, um, and they never turn people away. Um, if they need food, if they need clothing, um, they help them, and we support them very generously. Um, your food donations go to them, um, and we're supporting them financially as well. So thank you for that. The other half of today is March to the Manger offering. will go to the Salvation Army in Granite City. Um, that is also a wonderful organization that helps everyone who comes to them in the name of Jesus. And so we thank you for being supportive of that. And Sonny's just going to play a little offering music for us. And uh, Howard, I, have you got our, okay, I'll let you start. And you're just going to come to the center, kind of like we do for communion. And, and I guess you're going to come up here and funnel that way. Everybody goes back to their seat around past the manger. Um, if you don't feel comfortable coming forward, you can remain in your seat. We've got a touchless offering box in the back, and you can always drop it in there later. That's fine. But this is our time of offering our gifts and our tithes um, and sharing our joy with the Lord. So let us come.
ask God's blessing upon this offering. Would you pray with me, please? Our most gracious and everlasting God, we, we thank you for the joy of this day, and we pray your blessing to be upon these tithes, these offerings, this march to the manger gifts. Lord, we pray that, that these gifts will, will empower not only this church, but our community and even the world to bring peace on earth and goodwill towards all. That we might continue to be a, a shining light for you in the darkness. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next hymn this morning is number 216, Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming. I invite you to stand if you're able, and we'll sing together. Our first scripture this morning comes from 1 Samuel chapter 16. It's uh, the story of Samuel going to the little town of Bethlehem. Now the Lord said to Samuel, you've mourned long enough for Saul. I've rejected him as king of Israel. So fill your flask with olive oil and go to Bethlehem. Find a man named Jesse who lives there, for I've selected one of his sons to be my king. But Samuel asked, how can I do this? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. Take a heifer with you, the Lord replied, and say that you've come to make a sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you which of his sons to anoint for me. So Samuel did as the Lord instructed. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town came trembling to meet him. What's wrong? They asked. Do you come in peace? Yes, Samuel replied. I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Purify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then Samuel performed the purification rite for Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice too. When they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliab, and he thought, Surely this is the Lord's anointed. But the Lord said to Samuel, Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things 
the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Can you say amen? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Then Jesse told his son Abinadab to step forward and walk in front of Samuel, but Samuel said, this is not the one either. Um, this is not the one the Lord has chosen. Next, Jesse summoned Shimea, but Samuel said, neither is this the one that the Lord has chosen. In the same way, all seven of Jesse's sons were presented to Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. I don't understand. Are you sure these are all the sons you have? They're still the youngest, Jesse replied. But he's out in the fields watching the sheep and goats. Send for him at once, Samuel said. We'll not sit down to eat until the youngest arrives. So Jesse sent for him. He was dark and handsome with beautiful eyes. And the Lord said, this is the one. Anoint him. So as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flask of olive oil he had brought, and he anointed David with the oil. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. And then Samuel returned to Ramah. We're going to fast forward a few verses. So David went to Saul and he began serving him. Saul loved David very much and David became his armor bearer. And then Samuel sent word to Jesse asking, Please let David remain here in my service, for I am very pleased with him. May God add a blessing to the reading of the word.
Our second scripture reading for the morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 7. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, rivers of living water will flow from his heart. When Jesus said living water, he was speaking of the spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. When the crowds heard him say this, some of them declared, surely this man is the prophet we've been waiting for. Others said, he is the Messiah. Still others said, but he can't be. Will the Messiah come from Galilee? For the scriptures clearly state that the Messiah will be born of the royal line of David in Bethlehem, the village where King David was born. So the crowd was divided about him. Some even wanted him arrested, but no one laid a hand on him. May God add a blessing to the reading of the scripture. The season of Advent calls us to a journey. We stand at a juncture here where we may look back to the past and what the Lord has done for his people there to make this present possible. We look also to the future, to the time of fulfillment, when that Lord will come again. Advent, Advent is, is a time, time of, of increasing, increasing light. light. Watch it begin to glow, even in these dark streets. At last, we have arrived in Bethlehem, the goal of our quest for this Advent journey. Bethlehem, that little town fabled in story and song. We appear to have come at the wrong time, however. That seems always to have been the problem with Bethlehem. Things were always happening at the wrong time there. Right now, the city is overcrowded, teeming with tourists, even though this is not the usual time of year for such travel and visiting. They have come to register for Caesar's census. It is the wrong time to be in Bethlehem. Along with the tourists, of course, tax collectors abound, working on commission. Collect as much as the traffic will bear, hand over your quota, and anything beyond that is your commission, yours to keep. It is a system that breeds greed and foments resentment, for these are Caesar's taxes, and there are many who would say that that in itself makes this a wrong time. Any time Israel is not free, but under the burden of an oppressor. Although it was an oppressor that helped give Bethlehem its ancient reputation. Philistines. A thousand years before Caesar's Rome, and every bit as ambitious, but far less civilized. The Philistines. Armed with weapons of iron, the kind of foe that could easily intimidate an enemy. And Goliath, their champion. A giant of a man with an ego to match, armed to the teeth, and his teeth shouted insults. You've come at the wrong time. Jesse's older sons said to their little brother David, you should be back in Bethlehem. But David had come from Bethlehem at the request of their father, Jesse. His mission was to bring food and supplies for his siblings serving in Saul's army. But Goliath was down in the valley shouting, and it was the wrong time to be from Bethlehem. Or was it? Would anyone have suspected back in Bethlehem, watching that young tousle-haired shepherd practicing with his sling, singing his rhymes and playing his lute, whizzing his stones at imagined targets, herding his sheep tenderly but firmly, that this is the king 
whom God has chosen, the apple of God's eye, the hero of Hebrews, the sweet singer of the Psalms of Israel? In these dark streets, light was already beginning to shine. Look now, a young couple approaches, having traveled a long time to get to Bethlehem. As Samuel once approached, almost unnoticed on his mission from the Lord, so these two come amid the crowd. He, anxious, weary, heavily concerned. She, heavy with child, and a little anxious and weary too. Does anyone notice that this is once again the coming of the king whom God has chosen for the task? When David emerged in the light of God's plan, it was the wrong time to be a king from Bethlehem. For there was another king who still claimed the throne of Israel when he was lucid enough to lead the people. Saul was becoming unstable in mind and spirit, but being king, he had the power to enforce his madness. It was a bad time to be a young king from Bethlehem. Then again, mad kings are not uncommon in the history of Bethlehem. Those who seek to snuff out the life of any other, who would be chosen by God to bear the title of king? Samuel had had to sneak into Bethlehem to do homage to the king of God's choosing. The wise men will have to sneak out of Bethlehem after performing a similar duty. It is a bad time to be a young king born in Bethlehem, a dangerous time. The young couple moves now door to door, seeking shelter from the elements, and more, a place where their young child, cause of contractions and concern, can come into the world in safety and in dignity. She's new at this, and so is he. There are no other children with, this, with them on this journey, for this child will be their firstborn. It is the wrong time to be in labor, and it feels like the wrong place for giving birth. Rachel gave birth here, wife of Jacob, who was the son of Isaac, grandson to Abraham. Rachel, Jacob's most beloved, who had borne him Joseph, his most favored son, gave birth once more, this time to Benjamin, and then she died from complications. A blessed event turned into tragedy. Rachel died in childbirth at Bethlehem. And the town has never forgotten that, nor has the nation. Rachel weeping for her children has become something of a proverb, an expression of inexpressible grief for those whose lives come to an end at the wrong time. To add to Jacob's grief, his son Joseph would be sold into slavery by jealous brothers, and Jacob would be told his son was dead, torn apart by wild animals. All because Joseph had proposed his plans and dreamed his dreams at the wrong time. And then everything went wrong. Egypt was a wrong destination, the land of slavery, from which God would have to one day deliver his people by calling them forth the way one leads a child. Out of Egypt, I have called my son. This couple, bedding down now in a stable, will need the protection and guidance of the Lord. They will flee in the dead of night to the safety of Egypt and then be brought out again, the circle of God's history complete. It is a wrong time to be giving birth in Bethlehem or to be facing death away from here on foreign soil. Naomi understood that. More than a thousand years before, she had left Bethlehem for foreign soil with her dear husband and her two strong sons, sons who would marry there on foreign soil. And who would die there too, as would their father. It was a bad time to be from Bethlehem and possibly a bad time to return. But Naomi had no other choice and Ruth, her daughter-in-law, the widow of one of her sons, declared she had no other choice either. She would go back to Bethlehem. Could anyone have known, watching that young widow, 
in her grief, providing for the mother of the man she loved and lost? Could anyone have known that God himself was watching there in Bethlehem? And more than watching, warming the heart of a well-to-do farmer named Boaz to see the light? Yes, in these dark streets, the light of love, the gift of God, was beginning to be seen, to glow, to grow, to fan into a flame. These children of the Lord's own leading were to prepare the way ancestrally for David, whose royal son is about to come to Bethlehem. It is the wrong time to be at Bethlehem. Are there times when, like so many before us, Jacob and Joseph, Rachel and Ruth, David and Mary, we find ourselves feeling that way too? It's so busy at Bethlehem right now. The holidays are here, crowded with people and activities. Homes to clean. Trees to trim. Cookies to bake. Presents to wrap. Greetings to share. Meals to prepare. Could anyone have known? Can anyone perceive? This, this is, is the right, the right time. time. And what is happening is light. light. In these dark streets, light. light. That will shine from Bethlehem to lend its glow to all dark streets to come. And all wrong times. Times of oppression and of grief. Times of heartache and fear. Times of uncertainty and of hope. The, the time, time is, is now. now. But in this time, please notice, God is not speaking forth with a loud commanding voice. God's heavenly heralds hover and wait, clearing their voices and turning their trumpets from the journey to the hill outside of Bethlehem. But they have not yet flown. Do you suppose that even now, at this wrong time, a heavenly messenger is practicing his speech? Rejoice, Emmanuel is come. No, that isn't quite right. Too startling. Don't be scared. This is good news. Nope, that lacks a certain eloquence, doesn't it? Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Yes, yes, I like that one. <laughs> this is all about to be. But for now, the Heavenly Father is still and the angels are silent. For now, all of heaven and earth pause. For in this hour, at this moment, the time is finally right at Bethlehem. For now, the only sound, the only breath, the only holy utterance in all of creation is a tiny infant cry. Do you hear it? The Son of God is born. God is with us. Amen. darkness we were waiting without hope without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. To reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost. To redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, 
you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation jesus for our sake you died praise the father praise the son praise the spirit three in one god of glory forever to the King of Kings. In the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath. For that stone was smooth for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rode from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, and the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Praise the Father. Praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings, praise forever to the King of kings. I don't know that I want to follow that. <laughs> what a blessing. Thank you so much, Maddie. Our final hymn this morning is one of my favorites, number 219, What Child Is This? Let us stand and sing together. What child is this? What Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet with an sweet while shepherds watch are keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard. And angels sing, haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean estate where ox and us are Christians fear for sinners here. The silent word is bleeding. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds God and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring. Him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh, from peasant king to own him, the 
King of kings, salvation brings. Let loving hearts enthrone him. This, this is Christ, the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Go forth into your last week before Christmas and let nothing eclipse the joy of the birth of Jesus Christ. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.